Y'all will not believe what I just motherfucking heard. <laughs> what the fuck? You will not believe what I just heard. I'm going to tell you right now. If you come in and you see this, go ahead and send it. Go ahead and share it. Go ahead, because I'm about to go off. I'm about to go off. You will not believe what I just motherfucking heard. You will not believe it. <clears throat> so y'all know I do my little podcast thing, and you know what I'm saying? I talk about a lot of stories or whatever. So I've been getting information about George Floyd. I've been getting information about the young uh, young gentleman, Mr. Wright. Just a lot of information or whatever case to be. So I get this information, and it's about an enrichment coach, an empowerment coach who's speaking to women, you know, telling women, you know, certain things. Basically, they give you that that almost like a female Derrick Jackson type situation or whatever, but we know how that bullshit worked out. But here's the thought process. The thought process is this. So I'm listening to this lady talk to women, right, about, you know, how to better themselves, how to empower themselves and all that great shit or whatever case to be. And the woman, you know, uh, um, a woman stands up and starts talking about child support and men. You know, and right away, you know what I'm saying, of course, I'm on the edge of my seat because I really want to hear what's about to be said. So the woman says that, you know, um, that she, uh, um, um, I guess it was a situation with the pregnancy. There was a question about, you know, who baby it was or whatever. And she says that she admitted it, you know, that she was sleeping with other men. However, you know, the man, you know, decided to take her to the child support uh, place and then acts basically you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, to get a DNA test. So he gets the DNA test or whatever case be, and then come to find out that that's his child or whatever case be, and then immediately starts to do the things that he needs to do for the child or whatever case be. So the reason why we got to talk about this is because I found it interesting that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times when women get together and they start talking about situations like this, it's always a one-sided narrative. Like there is no reason whatsoever that a man would have an issue with child support. A man would have an issue with how things are working out, whether it's the custodial or non-custodial parent. There is no question. And I think that Derek Jackson, he did a good job of saying, oh, there's no excuses. There's no reasons. And I think it's some fuck shit. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it was some fuck shit two or three years ago when I first heard of the guy. And now that all of his business, all his dirty laundry is out or whatever, I still think it's fuck shit, but I'm just not the only one saying it. But the fact of the matter is what it's balled down to is people have these unrealistic outlooks on child support and, and on, I guess, the custody and shared responsibility. So I want to break down some shit for you all. Go ahead and goddamn share this shit. Let's get some people up in here right now because we got to talk about some things. Now, first of all, if you have sex with a man, okay, I'm just being real. I'm keeping this hundred. If you having sex with a man or whatever case may be, and that man and, and you as the woman decide that, you know what? Hey, I'm pregnant, right? It happens. One night stand, it happens. Two night stands, whatever, it happens. If the man tells you, ladies, listen to me. If the man tells you, I don't want to have a child with you, I'm, I'm being transparent. And I'm speaking for a lot of men right now. If the man tells your narrow-minded ass, your one-sided ass, that he do not want to have the child with you, don't have the child, it's going to stop a lot of confusion. It's going to stop a lot of heartache for you and that motherfucking man. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't have the child and then turn around and say, oh, that man's a deadbeat. When I, when I was listening to this woman talk, this empowerment coach, talk to these women, it's like, yeah, let's talk about these deadbeat men. And as I heard these women's stories, I'm like, well, that sounds like it's her fault. If a man tells you he don't want the child, don't have the fucking child. Don't say, oh, well, this is the miracle child. I didn't think I could get pregnant. Well, if you have the fucking child and the man tells you he don't want the child, then who fault is that? I'm just being realistic. I'm being realistic to save yourself, the child support, to save yourself, the heartache, the drama, the pain, the gossip, the bullshit. Don't have the kid. A lot of women, see, see, let me tell you something. There's a lot of women having um, kids because they, they think that's going to keep the man because they're on their last leg and don't think they can have any more children, right? Because they, they, they feel like having this, this, this baby is going to give them some type of leverage, Listen to me now before you turn this shit off, because this is about to be raw as fuck, 
Okay? Having a child does not mean that that man is going to stay with you. Just real shit. If you guys were having a one night stand or a situationship, you bringing a child into the situation is not going to make the situation better. Especially if the man says, I don't want the kid. Now, I see what happens is people say, okay, well, ch check it. I don't want the kid, but I'm still going to have the kid. And then you see these same people saying, oh, I'm going to drag you through the child support system. I'm going to talk about you and talk, talk, talk to everybody about you. Well, here's the shit, dumbass. Don't have the kid. Your big brother should have told you. Your father should have told you. Your uncle should have told you. Your aunt should have told you. Your cousin should have. Somebody should have told you. Don't have the kid. What I'm getting tired of seeing is, because I'm seeing a lot of it, and, and I'm really surprised that women are not telling these women, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Don't have the kid. Don't put yourself through the heartache and the stress and the drama dealing with someone who don't want a child with you. They don't want to be with you. I don't care how fat your ass is, how big your titties is. I don't care about none of that. I'm telling you the realistic truth, and I know it's not a lot of men that's going to say this to you ladies. Don't have the baby. Don't do it. Don't do it. It is your choice. Got it. However, that's another conversation. But the fact of the matter is you're having children with men that don't want children with you. And then you're expecting these same men that don't want children for you to be there for you. To respect your decision. As if, yes, of course, we know that hey, you, 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 you're having a baby. It's your body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, how much drama and heartache are you going to save yourself trying to deal with somebody that don't want to talk to you, that don't want to be with you? Somebody got to be real enough to tell you this shit. I'm sorry. Don't shoot the messenger. A lot of you all are preaching to the choir, talking about you get on social media. Hey, these deadbeat men, et cetera, et cetera. And then the first thing I want to know is, first of all, always got to look at the messenger. But the fact of the matter is, did the man ever tell you that he wanted the child? That's one. Two. Did the relationship dissolve before, after, or during the child came? A lot of you all are not even with the baby daddy right now, right now. And your claim to fame for not liking the baby daddy is because he's not with you. Your claim to fame for not liking the baby daddy is because he's not with your ass and he's with old girl. You know, that's what y'all tell old girl, right? Because he done moved on. He's in transition. So now what I need to do is I need to sit around and everybody I come across, I need to say, oh, let me tell you about the deadbeat dad. Well, my thought process is this. I've listened to several different lives on social media, right? Several different conversations. And I listen to women's point of view in regards to, you know, men not owning up to their responsibilities, men not being protectors, men not being providers. And I thought, you know what? There's some there's some points here. Here's the point. The point is if you guys are in a relationship, that's your man, that's your girl, that's your wife, that's your husband, etc. You are in a bona fide relationship. Fuck a situationship. Fuck it's a whole bunch of gray areas. We ain't talking about none of that. We talking about a bona fide relationship and you guys get pregnant. That means there is no question about who the mama is and who the daddy is. There's no question. You guys need to sit down and have a realistic conversation. Do you see yourself being together? Now, a lot of people say, well, the man should just wear condoms. A lot of guys are going to come back and say, well, a female should just use birth control. Okay, well, fuck it. Let's, let's say they both irresponsible. Let's say they both irresponsible. But does that mean that you should bring a child into the situation? Does that mean that you should bring a child into the situation? Think about how many babies are born out of wedlock, right? And then you have these two parents. Listen, motherfuckers, listen, all right? You have a baby, a child. This man and this woman has a, ba a baby, right? You guys are a motherfucking team. Regardless if you don't like the man, regardless if you don't like the woman, you are a team. When one person says, okay, I got the child, right? I'm going to exclude the father other than receiving child support. I'm going to exclude the father other than receiving child support. You are a fucking narcissist and you are toxic. You are not doing anything good for that child. Okay? 
period. Nobody else might not tell you this, so let me tell you this, okay? You are not doing anything good for that child unless this man has abused that child. Of course, keep him away, right? He has history of abusing children. Keep him away, right? Or he just says, man, fuck that child. I don't give a fuck about that kid. Okay, keep him away. Those are the only three reasons, or if he's dead or locked up. Other than that, I don't want to fucking see no Facebook lives, no YouTube lives, no Instagram lives talking about my deadbeat baby daddy because a lot of you motherfucking females are the problem. Period. Now let me get on these fucking guys. Okay? Fellas, I understand that you might not like her. You might not love her. You may not respect her, but that is your motherfucking child. Be connected to your child. Be patient. Be patient. That motherfucker may be trying to run you through all, to talk about you like a dog, tell everybody all of this other fuck shit that you know for a fact is a motherfucking lie. Hell, the people they telling, they know it's a fucking lie. But of course, people listen because they, they don't have anything positive going on in their motherfucking life. I get it, bruh. I get it. Trust me. I understand. Trust me. I understand. The fact of the matter is, this is a little tough love for both men and women. I'm so tired of them splitting this margin. Like, okay, one parent gets the child and the other parents over here. So the parent with the child is all obviously manipulating phone calls, manipulating text messages, manipulating emails, manipulating people in the community, manipulating the child. But you got the girlfriends high five and talking about, yeah, girl, we all share this hardship of dealing with these no good men. Let me tell you something. I personally don't know any man, personally, don't know any man that don't give a fuck about their kids. Let me say this again for the people in the back. Move over. Move over. You personally don't know any man that has had a child that has said, fuck my child. So that means any man, okay, that I know that has had children, any woman out there that is screaming, oh, they don't give a fuck about their kid. Use a motherfucking lie and you know it. Use a motherfucking lie and you know it. Now, if there is a man out there that is saying, well, I don't give a shit about my kids or whatever case may be. I'm doing me, blah, 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 blah. Hey, bruh, check this out. Grow up. Grow up. Do you not see what the hell is happening out here with all of this fuck shit? The kids is dying. Let, let me tell you something. This is how you protect your children. If you really love your children. You don't promote hatred. You don't promote racism. You don't promote separation from people that, that are in place to love them. There's a lot of people that feel like, okay, if I'm the custodial parent, I only, I only want the child to know all the people on my side of the family. I don't want them to know your side of the family. Well, your side of the family may be the dr drug addicts and the alcoholics and the criminals. Your side of the family may be the goddamn um, um, pedophiles. Your side of the family may be a whole lot of negative shit. So you might want to balance that out. See, the, the issue is that a lot of women, they empower themselves by, by, by hardship. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. A lot of women empower themselves through hardship. It's always, well, we hate this, so let's all work together. We hate that, so let's all work together. Oh, we got a problem with that, so let's all work together. And then a lot of times when these women get together, they really hate each other, but they're pretending like they like each other. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Just being real. Now, do fellas do it too? Yeah, they do it too. But it's just like on a on a higher level when it comes to women. So when I see women talking about we getting together for empowerment and we getting this, well, empowering yourself shouldn't be devaluing someone else. So when I'm sitting back, someone sends me information, right? They send me the little video and I'm watching it. And it's like, I'm seeing this woman trying to empower this crowd of people. And I'm like, well, first of all, we need to check your resume. That's one. But two, we need to find out why you feel like dragging men through the mud is a like somebody should give you a thumb up for this shit. Somebody should give you a thumb up. Let me give you motherfuckers the real deal. Here's the real deal. If you got to take a man or a woman to court for child support, you failed. You failed as a mother and you failed as a father. To stand in front of a third party, a fucking judge that don't give a fuck about you. All right, next. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, what time is it? Fuck. Got to go to lunch.
You look stupid as adults. You look dumb as adults. I don't care what your profession is. I don't care who your mama and daddy is. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care who you think you are in the community. You look stupid as fuck to stand in front of somebody else to let somebody else tell you, well, uh, according to uh, the numbers, you need to pay this person. Bro, do you realize that if the child support people say you're supposed to get $200 a month, do you realize that you could get more money by just letting the, the, the child go with the parent, the other parent? If, if the other parent says, oh shit, my child needs shoes, my child needs a haircut, my child needs a hair done, uh, 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 X, Y, and Z, yada, yada, yada. You can get more money that way than you can with saying, well, here's your $200 a month. Because see, here's what I noticed. I noticed that a lot of the custodial parents, some of y'all fucked up. I'm, a, I'm just going to be real. Some of y'all is fucked up. And this is not a direct shot, but I'm talking my shit. I'm talking my shit. A lot of y'all are fucked up because here's the thing. You'll get your 200 a month, right? And here's the thing. Then you'll run over there to your girlfriend and tell your girlfriend, oh, well, it's only $200 a month. What he think he doing with that? Right? So in the court order, it says, oh, well, see child twice a month. Then you'll run over here and tell your other girlfriend, he only see her twice a month. Like nothing's ever good, but when you get your new boyfriend that's giving you the new dick, Oh, everything they do is magnificent. They the, they the stepdaddy of the year. Brought ice cream. Oh, my God, he brought ice cream. Girl, let me post this and let me show everybody what he doing. He a real man. Bruh. I'm about to hurt some feelings with this one. I'm about to hurt some feelings with this one. Because, see, here's the thing. My thing about it is, ladies, stop empowering yourself through bullshit. Stop getting with women that want to pull your heartstrings and tell you certain things because they feel like all women go through this fuck shit. Well, not all women go through this fuck shit because somebody sat down, somebody had a real dad, somebody had a real mom, somebody had a real big brother, somebody had a real sister that told him, listen, if this man, if you guys are not in a relationship, you just met and, and you said that the dick was good, the pussy was fire, oh my God, oh my God, well, that's what it is. That don't mean you bring a baby into the situation. And it damn sure don't mean once the baby comes, let's play tug of war. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the most degrading thing that you can do to a child is talk about the other parent in front of a child. Get on social media and try to promote this whole narrative that the other parent is so bad in X, Y, and Z. You guys are a team at the end, the beginning, and the middle of the day. It takes both of you guys to work together. And I don't realize the type of people that y'all hang with. What type of community do you do you live in that it, it would allow someone to say, well, I'm going to sit here and talk about the daddy like a dog, and I want y'all to listen to me. Matter of fact, I want y'all to applaud me. I want y'all to do business with me. I want you to pay me for services and products. That seems stupid to me, but y'all talk to me. And the child grows up in this toxic, narcissistic community. We're talking from toddler all the way up to young adults. Listening and, and, and watching the, the, the parent just slowly give this child all this, these, this negative energy. Mental and emotional abuse. And we sit back and we think it's funny. When people start making them elaborate posts, let me talk about my baby mama and run down this list of all how bad she is. Then why did you get her pregnant, bruh? Why did you let him get you pregnant, sis? And now that you got a kid, all bets are off. You, you wasn't wearing a condom. You wasn't wearing uh, using birth control. The bets are off. It's time to sit at the table. But this is my issue. My issue is that when you have people that's supposed to have these problems, right? I do not trust men and women who tell me that I've had a problem with somebody over fucking six months. I do not trust them. I don't trust them. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's not difficult to sit down and lay out the facts. Not the facts that you want to lay out, but the facts. The fact of the matter is, okay, we have a child. That's the number one fact. Fuck what you don't like about the other person. That's the number one fact. But what I notice is that people tend to want to promote other things over the number one fact. Oh, you in another relationship. Okay, okay. Um, 
I got a problem with that. I got, I got a pro. Oh, you, you in another relationship? Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna make it hard for you to see your kid. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell people you don't want to see your kid. Wait, hold on. Let's let's make this a little bit. I'm gonna tell them not only do you not want to see your motherfucking kid, you don't want to support your motherfucking kid. You ain't got no. Oh my god. Suppose you got other kids though. Okay. I'm gonna say. You care more about those kids than this kid. Y'all ain't see this shit? Y'all ain't never heard this shit. I'm talking to myself right now. Y'all ain't hit the, share this shit. We gotta have a conversation. I'm tired of seeing this narrative where people start talking about <clears throat> child support as if that's the only thing. You can get your $200 a month, your $500 a month, your $1,000 a month, whatever the fuck it is that you supposed to be getting from the court. You lazy motherfuckers. That's right. You lazy, sorry ass motherfuckers. You can get that. That doesn't take away from the non-custodial parent's responsibility to be there for the child. If you set barriers for that non-custodial parent, well, you got to jump over this. You got to crawl under this. You got to duck this bullet. You got to dodge this motherfucking bullet. That is stupid. That's stupid. A lot of you are, a lot of women, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm, hey, no shame, but I'm just saying right now, a lot of women rely on their parents to help take care of the kid, rely on their bestie to help take care of the, the kid, rely on the new boyfriend to help take care of the kid when you guys have a fucking father. When you have a dad. When you have a non-custodial parent. And my thing about it is you guys are supposed to be equally yoked. You don't get more say-so because you the mom. You don't get more say-so because you the dad. Come together and work together. That's the problem. People can't come together and do what they supposed to do because everybody got these egos. Fuck your ego. That's your problem. Fuck your ego. Because you know what's going to happen when the police pull them over? They don't give a fuck if they was raised by one parent or two parents. But the parent that would have gave the child some fucking knowledge about when you get stopped by the police officer, don't do no sudden movements. Don't curse out the fucking police. Don't resist arrest. No, but the parent that like the party, the parent that like to fucking dog people out, the parent that like drama, the parent that like bullshit and gossip, that's the parent that the child get knowledge from. Matter of fact, the parent that like to pop off on anybody, oh, let me tell the fucking police what the fuck you not going to do with me. Who the fuck my mama is. Who the fuck my daddy is. Man, shut the fuck up. Shut up. You separate the team, you separate the mom, you separate the dad, and you leave your children exposed. You leave them mentally exposed, you leave them verbally exposed, emotionally exposed to the world. And they going out here just trying to figure out, well, you know, I didn't see my mom in no good relationships. I ain't see my dad in no good relationships. They couldn't handle to have the conversation that needed to be had so they could work together so I could have a good life. And it's not just providing, oh my God. It's not just giving your kid a PlayStation or buying them a new bedroom set or giving them expensive clothing. It's more than that. It's about genuine love. It's about genuine respect. It's about genuine honesty. It's about actually saying, this is this child's father. This is this child's mother. That is, that is the number one team, not the NBA, not the NFL. That is the number one team in America. A real true family and you don't have to be in the household to be a true family or to co-parent and a lot of you sever ties only because your ego and attitude is getting the best of you that's just honest just honest you send people through the rigmarole and go tell this person that person this person and none of them people are telling your dumb ass bro won't you just work with that man won't you just work with that woman what are you doing that's y'all kid that's y'all kid. You sit down and listen to people complain for hours, and it's like, how long has this been going? Check this out. How long has this been going on? Girl, this been going on for two years. Let me sip this water. You you've been having this problem with this man for two years. Then when you sit down and you listen to what they say the problem is, you'll notice that it's nothing to do with the kid. It's all about their ego. 
They're going to mention the girlfriend. They're going to mention he moved on. Oh, he just left us for dead, et cetera, et cetera. All this other crazy shit. But he, they're not going to mention the child. Well, well, yeah, he might love that kid. He might respect that kid. So what the problem is? You ready to listen to total strangers that work at the child support office about how and what you need for your child when you can't be adult enough or mature enough to sit down and have a conversation. And we and y'all listen to these people as if they're telling you the gospel truth. That's just real. Y'all listen to these people as if they're telling you something that you didn't already know. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. People, there are some people out there that love to play victim. And a lot of times it ain't even their story that they're telling. They're telling their girlfriend's story, they, their, their mama's story, a, a friend of a friend's story. It's not even their story to tell. But I know if I tell you, you know what, man, I got an issue with my baby mama. It's going to be three guys that say, oh, well, at least one of them going to have an issue with their baby mama. That's going, It's going to resonate. But at some point in time, one of those out the three is going to say, well, how long has this been going on? Because successful people, smart people with common sense knows that adults don't carry problems. Adults fix problems because they realize, bro, we ain't got time to stay right here. This is the short meter target. We gotta get to we gotta get to the long meter target. And a lot of people are so stuck on that 25 meter target, they can't see no other targets. And your children are suffering for that. A lot of y'all talk to y'all children like shit. Y'all treat them like shit. Oh, you look like your daddy. You look like your mama. I'm going to talk to you any type of way. I'm going to do you any type of way. And we sit back at uncles and aunts and spectators and say, you know what, man? You know, that's fucked up what they doing. But we don't do nothing about it. We watch post after post after, you know, subliminal shot, subliminal shot, subliminal shot. We don't do nothing about it. And some people will say, well, what, what do we do about it? Well, here's the thing. The thought process is, whether you care or not, there's a child involved. So if you don't care enough to be like, man, hey, let me hit your DM. Do better. Do better. This is ridiculous. On, on some real shit, do better. Because at the end of the day, the child is asking, the child didn't ask to be here. But I'm sure the child is saying, bro, I want all the support I can get so I can grow up and be a productive citizen. So I can learn about credit, so I can learn about buying homes, so I can learn about traveling, investing, so I can learn about, okay, what, do I want to go higher education first or do I want to go military? Do I want to be an astronaut? Do I want to be a police officer? I, I want, don't shorten your child's success. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to exclude you. I'm going to exclude you. And my whole thing about this, if you've been excluding the mama or the daddy for over six months and you got friends around you that are listening to you complain and bolster that you're the only one doing it. And that, that's what kills me about six single, single parents. Are you single because you choose to be or are you single because you got to be? Like, is the other person dead? Are they incarcerated? Just being real. You guys be using this whole child support system as this crutch, as if it's going to help your child. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If your child, if your child is only seeing the, the, the non-custodial parent once, twice, three times a month, that's bullshit. And I don't give a fuck how many people pat you on the back, how many people praise you, how many people cheer you on, you're failing. You are fucking failing. Out of 30 days, three days, you're failing. Out of 30 days, two days, you're failing. And you can pat yourself on the, oh my God, look at all the stuff that I buy my child. I'm such a great person. You a jackass. You a jackass and a joke, period. A jackass and a joke. You can stand in front of how many crowds you want to. You can go to church. You can go to daddy, mama house, uncle house. Oh, you such a great parent. Da, 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 da. First of all, check this out. Anybody that believe, now imagine a doctor only going to school three days out the month. 
what are you what, what are they preparing for <laughs> the fuck are they preparing for imagine a soldier right out of a month only doing goddamn some type of training three days out the month you think they're gonna be ready to deploy out of three days i'm ready now i'm good to go i know everything i need to know god damn it so being a parent three days out the month suffices that's fair. That's fair and impartial. Some of y'all are so fucking stupid and filled with so much hate and anger that when, even when you say it out loud, you don't get it. And I and, and I, me personally, I'd be surprised at the shit that I hear because I'm like, is anybody else hearing this fuck shit? So, the, so, so let me get it straight. The non-custodial parent is not a deadbeat because they don't love their child. They don't, they don't want to be in their child's life. They're a deadbeat. They're, they're a deadbeat because they got a new relationship, right? They don't sit down and ask you what type of cologne or perfume you're wearing. They don't sit down and lollygag with you because here's the thing. A lot of times that other person feel the void for the person, for the custodial parent. They feel the void. Oh, 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 they feel the void. They feel the void. Whether it's dick and attention, goddamn pussy and relaxation, whatever you want to say, they feel a great void. And when that void got taken away, guess what you feel that with? Bitterness, vindictiveness, negativity, ego, attitude, name calling, disrespect, degrading. Stop me when I'm lying. Stop me when I'm lying. Now, this goes across the board. There are men and there are women that do this shit. I get it. Definitely. I get it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm so frustrated with parents nowadays, man. I'm just frustrated with parents. And I'm frustrated with hearing people, especially saying, I'm empowering people, y'all. Empowering them to do what? You empowering people to do what? When you ain't doing right yourself. Man, fuck your child support. If you got to go to a court to tell another grown man that ain't got shit to do with your child, this grown man or this grown woman don't love their child enough to give them a couple dollars. When the fact of the matter is you're only using a court system because you're not smart enough to say, well, I know I'm vindictive. I know I'm bitter. I know I'm only mad because he got a new girlfriend or because she got a new dude. Because that's why you're really there. It don't take a rocket science to see that shit. So when I'm watching people talking about, I'm empowering people. You ain't empowering them to do shit. And I would tell you, ladies, especially those who listen to Derrick Jackson, it's great to sit down and empower people and encourage them to do the right thing and to, to say, fix your crown and all that great snazzy stuff. But at the end of the day, let me tell you guys something, man. Anytime you listen to a message and the message is not balanced, that means they're not telling you to go and communicate with the person that you have the situation with. When they try to communicate you, communicate you away from the person that you should be talking to, you should be working with, you should be saying, you know what, let me hear this out and come to a reasonable understanding. That was my concern about Derek Jackson's message is that you empowered women not to communicate with men. You empowered women to the point of delusion, and now it's like, okay, well, now Derrick Jackson is a joke because, oh, we found out that he's not living where he's supposed to live. And the thing about it is, I never thought Derrick Jackson was perfect. You did. You did. What he should have been encouraging women to do is to sit down with the people that they have a problem with. Don't go over there and talk to your girlfriend. Don't go talk to your mom. Don't go talk to somebody in the community. Talk to the person that you should be talking to to fix the problem. You're using a court system and it's not even about fixing a problem. It's about amplifying, pouring more fuel on the fire. A lot of people use the court system as a mode of empowerment as a mode to disrespect or to embarrass the other parent. It's it's all crazy. And the thing about it is you're, you're, you're taking away from the energy that you could be giving your child, that you both could be giving your child because that's power. Whether you live inside the home or not, co-parenting, working together, that is the best gift you can give your kid. That is the best gift you can give your kid and take it as a father, okay, from a father, the best, I've, I've, I've had, I've, I've been able to co-parent and I've been going through the rigmarole as well. So take it from a person who's the best gift you can give your child 
It's to, it's, it's to work with someone who wants to work with you. I want you, I want you all that's hearing my voice right now. Cause I know as soon as you see the title, fuck child support. Oh shit, let me hit this shit. Let me hit this shit. The best gift that you can give your parent, uh, your, your child, right? Is the knowledge that both of both of the parents have. Is the knowledge that both of the parents have because now you're 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 arming them for success. You're telling them how to maneuver. You don't give per one person's perspective, you give both perspective. Oh my God, that's a male and a female's perspective? Okay, okay, I, okay, I need to clean up behind myself. Okay, let me learn how to wash the car. This is how you fry an egg. This is how you talk to people. This is how you open up a door. This is how you do your hair. This is how you brush your teeth. You're getting everybody's perspective. But a lot of people feel like, okay, well, I can replace the non-custodial parent with materialistic shit. That'll do it. That makes me the best parent. I can replace the non-custodial parent with dick and attention, with Nuva JJ. I can replace the person that is biologically responsible for the child with someone who is temporarily here now with the child. Let me get my water. Y'all point out a woman that's, that's saying what I'm saying. Because I'm telling you right now, if you get a woman that's balanced, that is telling men and women to work together and stop all of this crazy shit, stop trying to use the child support system like it's doing, it ain't doing nothing. It ain't doing shit but showing how, how difficult you are, showing how disrespectful you are, and how delusional you are to think that this man who sits behind this, as a judge, looking at you, looking at the father, y'all two are stupid. Can you imagine what that conversations, what that conversation would be like when he get home or she gets home? I had the two biggest dummies in front of me earlier today arguing about some shit. I could clearly see that she mad because he got a new uh, a, a girlfriend. Hey, some of y'all got boyfriends, right? I'm just saying. I mean, let's be real, man. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be real. I'm me personally. It's just like it's overwhelming to see how. People saying, you know, my baby daddy this and my baby mama this. And at the end of the day, man, you guys should work together. You guys should build together. You guys should be on the same wavelength in regards to co-parenting. Stop letting people, you know, uh, uh, um, um, push and pull and, okay, let me play this game. This irrational ass game. Fuck all that shit. Be connected to the household if you can't be in the household. But at the end of the day, make sure that you guys are working together to make sure that child has everything that they need to have. I'm just saying. It's a lot of people promoting negativity because that's who they are. It's a lot of people promoting drama because that's who they are. A lot of people promoting gossip because that's who they are. The next time somebody sit in front of you and they whip out their phone and say, let me tell you about my baby daddy. Let me tell you about my baby mama. Man, get them the fuck out your house. Get them the fuck out your church, out your business. Because I'm telling you right now, if they are willing to sit down in front of you and downgrade their baby mama and baby daddy, I'm telling you, do they, they're not good business partners. They're not good goddamn people in a relationship because here's the thing. They're failing as parents. They're failing as parents. You take it for what it is. You take it for what it is. You take it for what it is. I said what I said. Deuces. Peace.